Hey guys, it's Drew with Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about going the distance as a coin dealer, uh, pushing yourself to be someone that is, you know, working hard and finding the deals when somebody else goes, let me go home, I'm tired, I don't know if I can do this. We're gonna be talking about this in this video because we like going the distance, we like providing great coins, and we like, you know, providing for our customers especially when uh, it can be a little bit tough. But let's get this video started. You are more than what you are right now. I, I listen to a lot of videos and I constantly tell myself that every day. We're sometimes just at where we are right now, which looks like this. But sometimes you have to stretch yourself. You have to pull yourself apart in a way to create a bigger you or a better you. And so there's some dealers that are in the coin space that have been fed. They have their day to day. They wake up at you know eight and they get home at two and their shop closes and a lot of great deals come to them and, and they're fed and they're people that are content. But for you and for me, we can't be content. We have to stretch ourselves. We have to be more than what we were yesterday. And that starts with just making small decisions today that make you a better dealer that provides more things for your clients. So we want to give you guys one example of us going the distance when sometimes it might just be convenient or easier to go back home. Uh, we had a customer looking for some more bullion and so we drove a few hundred miles to go pick it up. We got the best price for them, we got the best price for us and it worked out through and through. And so we sat there once we had the bullion and we go, man, like, should we just go home? Like, should this be just done? I mean, we made our money. You know, anybody else that's a dealer would love to make this much money in one day. We just, we can go home. And then I was like, you know what? There's more in the tank. There's more things we can do. We have more money. We need to go spend it. We need to go find some coins that people would, might like. And so we said, you know what? On a whim, let's go to these coin shops. I know that they're 145 miles away. And so we started driving that way, 145 miles. And so we got there and there wasn't a whole lot of lower end coins, but there were some high end coins that left us some decent, some serious margins. And, you know, we ended up walking away, buying those gold coins and having the ounces for our customers. And overall the day was super successful. But at the hindsight, when you're, you know, buying those rounds, your mind is telling you, I can't do it. We shouldn't do it. Um, we shouldn't take the risk. And we just said, you know what? We, we need to do something different. We need to be more than what we were yesterday. And so I hope you guys learned a little bit from that. I hope you guys push yourself. We're all in different stages in terms of being collectors or coin dealers. And so today's the day to push yourself. Make yourself a little bit more than what you were yesterday because it is important. It's how you become great. And we're all trying to do that. But let's show you guys a few new purchases before we show you those gold coins. We hope you enjoy. All right, so here's a few CC uh, new purchases. You guys might have remembered this coin from a few months ago. This is a 1921 Mercury Dime, great MS65 full bands by PCGS. CEC approved. This coin's from an original roll. It's being offered for the first time on our website, so make sure you go check it out. Just a stunning coin, original, and has a great story to it. The guy that ended up buying this um, was someone that traded, uh, the guy that had the original roll of these coins for baseball cards. So definitely too cool. We sent this to CEC ourselves in the past. Here's an 1884 CC grade, MS62. Nothing crazy about the grade, but it is CEC approved, mostly white. And I just like the way the coin looks. I think it's really nice, no matter you know, how low end it might feel to you. Um, People are looking for CEC coins and they're getting their feet wet, especially with uh, sometimes Mint State 62, 63 coins. Uh, the last one I wanna show you is this 1907 Liberty V nickel. It is CEC approved as well. Has a few distracting spots on, you know, on the hair and the cap there as well, but it is fully struck. And a way to know it's fully struck on the reverse is you can check, take a look at the corn. You see the corn right underneath the right side of the V you can see all the details of the corn. Uh, that's something that someone told me recently, and so I've been looking at that detail every time I see Liberty V-Nickel because that is important for the strike. 
um, especially on most coins. If the strike isn't nice, they're going to uh, not give it as high of a grade. There's a few distracting spots on the reverse as well, so just take a note of that if you guys want to pick up this coin. Thanks for taking a look at these new purchases. So now we show you guys the new purchases. We wanted to show you those gold coins. And there's one that's graded Mint State 63. There's one that's graded Mint State 64. And we wanted to kind of point out a few different things about these two coins that make them different. Because sometimes it can be very strange and hard to grade gold. And when I was sitting uh, in the car for hours on the way home, when we bought those coins, I was like, man, there's some extreme differences just from a Mint State 63 to a Mint State 64 grade. And so let's walk through those coins and uh, we hope you learned something. So here are a few coins that we drove the distance for. 1907D, $20 lib. 1907S, $20 lib. And the 1905, uh, $5. And so just a few gorgeous pieces. Let's talk about these. So when you take a look at this coin, the luster is pretty phenomenal. There's a lot of uh, issues in the fields just because it is a gold coin. It gets pretty beat up, as most people know. But I think what... Most of the time it separates this coin from a Mint State 63 is the strike and the detail. And you're going to see that in, you know, in, in contrast with the 63 that we have from the 1907S. But really nice, uh, you know, hair, really nice detail. Everything's really popping up. Sometimes when they're striking these coins, it's just extremely weak. And the dies are pretty beat up as well. But when I took a look at the cheek here, the cheek... Is almost fully struck so is the hair and so that's something that I could see that's a major difference with this coin and the other coin let me flip it over real quick and show you the luster on the reverse I mean just a stunning you know stunning set of surfaces here once again when I look at you know the detail on the wings the detail in the rays and then the stars especially in the shield everything's there just really gorgeous and it may seem like it doesn't make any sense right now, but I'm going to show you this other coin. So this is a 1907S, Great Mint State 63. When I take a look at this coin, you can see the rubbing on the cap here. You can see the rubbing in the hair. You can see uh, just a lot of things that were happening to this coin. There's not as much rub on the other coin as this coin, and the strike is a little bit more softer on this coin. You can see that in the hair right here as well. Just not all the detail is there. And when you put the light right over this coin, it almost seems like it's polished. And it's not really polished, it's that the, the metal is just so soft that it was slid a little bit. And so a lot of the detail is almost choppy. And uh, I don't know, it's, for me it's a little bit more easy in hand to see this. When I look, take a look at the reverse, um, the wings are a little bit softer as well. The detail is kind of a little bit mushy. You could take a look right here. On both sides, this detail is mushy, and uh, I don't know. For me, I think that the, the this coin went through a little bit more, you know, in terms of problems when it was being transported, like most mint state coins do. And I feel like the strike was a little bit weaker on this coin. And so let me show you guys the other one real quick. Run the light over it, and uh, just so you guys can take a look at this one another time. So, I mean, you could take a look at the details a lot stronger to me. And the luster is a lot stronger as well. And the strike just feels a lot stronger too. So, maybe this is something that we can use as comparisons in the future when we're picking up raw gold. Maybe something's a 62 or a 3. Maybe something's a 64. Sometimes there's a big jump in those grades. And that's what we have to learn. And sometimes it costs a lot of money to do so because, you know, if you look at these two coins here, this is about $9,000. So definitely an expensive and interesting lesson. And hopefully we can make some decent money on those. The last one I want to show you is this 1905 $5 half eagle. Nice color on the obverse. No distracting spots for me. I felt it was, you know, pretty attractive. And nothing to, you know, write home about in terms of its crazy grade or a rare date. It's just a common date, nice looking gold piece. And I wanted to offer this on our website as well. So thank you guys for taking a look at these gold coins that we went the distance for. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on what we had to talk about today and the coins we displayed. Subscribe if you're new. And if you guys are looking for bullion in Texas, we 
drive anywhere. We also ship bullion to you. So make sure to reach out to me personally, my cell phone number, 832-538-4122. I answer texts, I answer calls. So I would love to sit down and talk with you about adding some bullion to your collection. But we'll see you guys in the next video.